Hi folks, welcome to this video on angular momentum, right? This is the branch of biomechanics, the only branch of biomechanics that is to do with objects rotating or spinning, okay? Um, when all the other aspects, scales and uh, vectors, Newton's laws, projectiles and impulse, they're all linear biomechanics, objects moving in straight lines. This is the only one to do with objects that are rotating, angular momentum, okay? So what are, uh, what's an example uh, of this? Well, here are a couple of examples here, some figure skaters uh, pirouetting, but you know, gymnastics, tumbling, um, Tom Daly doing a dive routine, uh, they're all aspects or, or they're all questions that could come up on angular momentum. But every time you get a question on angular momentum, there are key things that you need to say. Right, angular momentum, what is it? Right, angular momentum is the quantity of rotation, okay? It's also what we call a constant or a universal constant. So the quantity of rotation is a constant. Think of the Earth, you know, doing its rotations. Uh, you know, it'll do 365 rotations around the Earth, uh, around the Sun, sorry, every single year. That's its angular momentum, its quantity of rotation. And it's a constant. It's done that number of revolutions around the Sun ever since, for billions of years. Okay, so angular momentum is a constant and it's the quantity of rotation. And it can be calculated in the following way. Angular momentum equals angular velocity multiplied by moment of inertia. So now we've got a couple of other terms. So what do each of these mean? Well, angular velocity is the speed of rotation. So in terms of these two figure skaters here, how quickly they are rotating around. Moment of inertia is their reluctance to rotate. Now, just because we've said reluctance to rotate doesn't mean it's not going to. If you have a high reluctance to rotate, you're not. it's going to take a lot to get you to rotate. If you've got a low reluctance to rotate, then you're going to rotate quite easily. So here's what we need to be thinking about. We have had an essay question on this in the past. Now, currently, if I've put all this down, I've got five marks, and I'm looking for that golden eight or nine points to get my full marks. Angular momentum is the quantity of rotation, and it's also constant. Okay, there's a tick, there's a tick. Angular momentum equals angular velocity multiplied by moment of inertia. There's a tick. Angular velocity is the speed of rotation. There's a tick. Moment of inertia is the reluctance to rotate. There's a tick. What could the question be about? The question is often, how does an athlete or a performer change or alter their speed of rotation? I.e., how do they change that? How do they increase angular velocity to spin faster how do they decrease angular velocity to spin slower? Anyone who's seen figure skating before will know that when the figure skater is in this position, she, he or she will rotate, but they will rotate relatively slowly. Okay, Simply by tucking the arms and legs in nice and tight, they will then rotate very, very quickly. Okay, So by changing body shape, we can change our angular velocity and our... Uh, speed of rotation and that's the bit that we're going to look at now how do athletes do this well again it comes down to this equation what have we said about angular momentum we've said it's a constant i.e it's unchanging for this routine for whatever it is that the performer is doing now here's the thing what do i want to do i potentially want to let's say i want to spin faster let's say i want to increase my angular velocity if I want to increase my angular velocity and angular momentum is constant, what must I have to do to my moment of inertia? The answer is I must decrease my moment of inertia in order to increase my angular velocity. This one's value stays the same, it's unchanging. So to increase the angular velocity, I've got to decrease the moment of inertia. Alternatively, okay, if I want to decrease my angular velocity, if I want to spin slower... I have got to increase my moment of inertia. So it's what we call an inversely proportional relationship. As one goes up, the other one goes down. Why? Because this one is a constant. It does not change. So if that value is fixed, whatever moment of inertia does, angular velocity must do the opposite and vice versa. And the one that we want to change is angular velocity. Okay? Let's look at another exponent of rotating. Okay, Tom Daly doing a dive routine. Now here he's doing somersaults. 
but he's doing somersaults in two different body positions. This will hopefully become clear in a minute. Remember, what you've got to do, angular momentum is a constant, okay? What have we got to do? If I want to increase my angular velocity, I've got to decrease my moment of inertia, okay? If I want to decrease my angular velocity, if I want to rotate slower, I need to increase my moment of inertia. How do I do that? Well, let's do it in blue. Let's get it that one down first. Let's talk about the increase in rotation. So to increase angular, sorry, to increase speed of rotation or angular velocity, the athlete must decrease moment of inertia. How do you decrease your moment of inertia? You decrease your moment of inertia by tucking your body parts in nice and tight. So by tucking in the body into a tight position, that will decrease, oops, move that back, sorry. Get my pen on, that's what I wanted. That will decrease your moment of inertia, which will then increase your angular velocity. What we're talking about here is that one there. In that position there, Tom Daly is likely to be forming a triple somersault. He's tucking his body in really, really tight and he's going to get more spins in because he's going to be rotating quicker. He's going to have a greater angular velocity. So in order to decrease their speed of rotation, if you want to slow your speed of rotation down, you've got to increase your moment of inertia. How do you increase your moment of inertia? By spreading your mass out. So what we're seeing here is, if we look at this picture here, what is Tom Billy doing? He's spreading his legs out into a wider position, okay? If he spreads his mass out, that is immediately going to increase his moment of inertia, which in turn is going to decrease his angular velocity. So what we often find is with divers, when they're doing their triple somersaults, they tuck in nice and tight, tuck the knees in nice and tight, you know, flex the knees, you know, plant and flex the ankles, get yourself into as tight a ball as possible. But when you're about to extend outwards so that you can enter the water, you need to decrease your angular velocity. You need to slow your spin down so that you can enter the water in a straight line. What he will then do is he will extend legs out and then ultimately straighten out into a full-on stretch position and that will ultimately slow the angular velocity down by increasing his moment of inertia, okay? It's a lot to take on board, but they're the key things you need to be talking about in order to get marks on this question, okay? It's to do with changing the body shape, changing the body shape then changes the moment of inertia, which then changes the angular velocity. That's what you've got to be talking about. But first, you've got to know your definitions. Okay, good luck with it, folks.